Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the course entitled Symmetry, Stereochemistry and Applications. So in this week, uh, on sixth week, we are going to discuss about the diastereomerism in ring systems and pi systems. So let us start by discussion with the diastereomerism in the ring systems. So, what we know is that in case of ring systems, it is possible to have cis and trans isomers. In case of carbocyclic and heterocyclic ring systems. So, what do we mean by uh, the cis and trans is that suppose if we draw any molecule suppose this is cyclobutane and if the substituents suppose x and y are on the same side then we call that as the cis compound and if the substituents x and y are on the opposite side then we call that as trans isomer. So, in these ring systems some groups are considered to be above the average molecular plane and some groups are below the average molecular plane. So, you, you can easily understand that beyond cyclopropane, cyclobutane, cyclopentane, cyclohexane and so on will have the carbon atoms in not in one plane they will be residing in different set of planes. So, therefore, based on the orientation of those two groups above and below we identify them as cis and trans isomers. So, now if we try to understand these uh, isomers in terms of whether they are enantiomers or diastereomers or meso compounds we need to understand it in a systematic manner. So, let us start by considering a cyclopropane system because cyclopropane is the smallest ring having a formula C 6 H 6. So, when we replace two hydrogens by some group say methyl group we would get C 6 H 4 C H 3 whole 2. So, that is dimethyl cyclopropane. Now, these dimethyl cyclopropanes can have two different isomers where you can have the methyl groups both up and the other isomer where the two methyl groups are opposite that is one up and one down.
if we look at these two molecules what we see that the cis isomer has a sigma plane the sigma plane bisects the molecule like that so this methyl methyl mirror image hydrogen hydrogen mirror image and contains that particular carbon atom so since the molecule has a sigma plane this belongs to cs point group so although these two centers are chiral centers this represents a meso compound hence it is optically inactive what happens when we consider the trans compound this trans compound has a c2 axis that c2 axis is passing through the midpoint of this cc bond and containing that carbon atom and if we rotate the molecule about that c2 axis the upper methyl will come as lower methyl upper hydrogen will come as lower hydrogen so this molecule has a c2 axis it it belongs to the point group c2 and what we see here is that this molecule is a disymmetric molecule and hence this is optically active if you draw the mirror image of this molecule then you will see that the mirror image is this one so these two are non superimposable mirror images this trans molecule exist as a pair of enantiomers and this cis and trans compound they are a pair of diastereomers so now here what we have is that the two substituents that we have discussed are the same so now i would like you to see what happens if the substituents are different suppose in a cyclopropane compound you have a chlorine and a bromine substitution so the this is the cis isomer and this is the trans isomer certainly these two are pair of diastereomers as they are not the mirror image of one another and then what we see is that the symmetry that the cis compound had the sigma plane is now missing because those two groups are different so this molecule does not have any symmetry other than c1 symmetry therefore this molecule and its mirror image are pair of enantiomers so this molecule is chiral optically active
same is true for the trans molecule also because the original compound which had two methyl groups had a C2. Now, because of two groups being different that C2 does not exist and therefore, this molecule is also a chiral and optically active. So, the cis isomer will have two enantiomers and the trans compound will also have two enantiomers. And hence, this compound will have four optically active isomers. Right? Now, let us see the situation where we have three substitutions. Tri substituted cyclopropane derivatives. So, there are <coughs> few possibilities. Type 1, when the substituents are same. So, you can have compound like this all three methyl groups are up and the other one where two methyl groups are up and one methyl group is down. So, what we see here is that both the compounds have sigma plane right, because if you see the mirror plane which is actually bisecting the molecule and passing through that C C bond you have a sigma plane in the molecule. So, both the molecules have sigma plane therefore, in both. So, they are belonging to point group C s and hence they are meso compounds and optically inactive. But then there is other type possible which is type 2, where two substituents are same and third one is different. So, these compounds have three different possibilities. So, what we see here is that in 1 and 2, they have a sigma plane and hence 
they belong to point group C S. So, they are meso compound and optically inactive. Whereas, the compound 3 does not have any symmetry. So, it actually belongs to C 1 point group. this is optically active. So, therefore, this 3 will have a pair of enantiomers. The relationship between 1 2 and 3 uh, would be diastereomers. Right? Now, the third type of the cyclopropane derivatives will be those where all the 3 substituents are different. So, this has four different types. And what we see in these things, uh, these molecules that all of them, they do not have no any symmetry, which means all of them belong to C 1 point group. Therefore, all of them exist as pairs of enantiomers. So, therefore, total 8 stereo isomers are possible. And what is the relationship between 1, 2, 3 and 4? These 1, 2, 3 and 4 are the stereomers. So, now I would leave the last part of this for you to figure out what happens when when we have a molecule with two different substitutions in two carbon atoms 
of circular problem. So, with this we would like to move to the next part. So, the next higher cyclic alkane is the cyclobutane. So, we would start with, with the discussion with 1, 2 disubstituted cyclobutane. As you can understand that cyclobutane will have 4 carbon atoms and of course, the molecule is not planar. Here, we are assuming the molecule to be planar and then writing the substitutions. So, this one is the cis isomer of 1 to disubstituted and the next one that I am drawing here is the trans isomer of disubstituted cyclobutane. So, what we see here in case of the cis compound once again the cis compound has a sigma plane which bisects the molecule like that. This cis is a meso compound optically inactive. Whereas, the trans compound has a C 2 axis. Therefore, it belongs to C 2 point group and hence it is a chiral compound. Exists as a pair of enantiomers. and optically active. Now, let us see if in this case when the substituents were same, if the substituents are different what happens? this is the cis isomer and this is the trans isomer. So, here in both cis and trans there is no symmetry. Therefore, it belongs to C 1 point group and hence they are optically active. They exist as pair of enantiomers. So, here these two cis and trans they are diastereomers. Here also cis trans they are diastereomers. Each one of them exist as a pair of enantiomers. So, now let us see what happens when we have Three one three disubstituted cyclobutane.
this is cis and this will be trans. So, in these two compounds, there are two possibilities whether x equal to y or x not equal to y. That means, whether it is dimethyl or one is chloro and one is bromo or one is methyl and one is chloro and so on. What we see in this case that the cis compound and trans compound both of them have sigma plane passing through the x and y groups. So, both of them belong to C s point group, therefore, they are meso compounds and optically inactive. This relationship is valid for both x equal to y and x not equal to y. So, we will continue from here in the next lecture.